If you've got your Bibles tonight, I'm going to read from Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 8. I'm going to read in Balinese tonight. No, just kidding. In Bahasa, no. It says, but you will receive power. Someone say power. power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I was praying about what to share tonight and I felt the Lord say this word and it's called what I'm gonna call the title of my message is power, 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 Holy Spirit, power. That's what we're talking about tonight. We're gonna look at what the baptism of the Holy Spirit looks like on our lives. And so the thing, the one thing that separates us from every other religion in the world is the fact that we have a risen Saviour in Jesus Christ and we have the Holy Spirit who is at work in our lives every day. In fact, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, it's important to say that the Holy Spirit is not limited. He's not limited to what He can do in your life. You don't have to be like a really, really good person or a really, really nice person, or a really, really holy person to have the Holy Spirit. No, He's not limited to any gender, to any society, or to any person on this planet. In fact, the Bible says in John 3 verse 34, for the one whom God has sent speak the, speaks the words of God, and God gives the Spirit without limit. The spirit without limit. I don't know about you, but not many people like limits. I don't like limited spending or having limited money or a limit on how fast you can go, a limit on what you can and can't eat, or maybe a, 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 a limit on a lunch break or limited spaces available. Let me tell you something tonight. The Holy Spirit is not like your credit card that has a limit. Come on, someone. Who here, you've ever exceeded the limit on your credit card? Come on, look at you, you sinners. You, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's just a joke. But listen to it. You know, my wife, when she came to Australia, she's from Bulgaria, by the way. When we first got married, she used to think that credit on a credit card was free money. And so she would go out in a little Bulgarian you know, accent and go out and be shopping and buying things and shopping and getting things. And then one day she rings me in a little Bulgarian voice, a little bit angry, and she says, baby, in her little accent, she says, the credit card is not working. The credit card is not. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, baby, it's not working. I don't know if that's a Bulgarian accent. <laughs> but we'll just go with it for now. It's not the working. And I said, babe, that's because you've exceeded the limit on your credit card and you get penalized when you do that. You see, when you think about most of our world, there are limits. But when you think about what doesn't have limits, you know, like some restaurants, like Hungry Jack's refills. <laughs> Who loves a good Hungry Jack's refills? I mean, you can get unlimited refills at Hungry. I mean, we used to have a restaurant in Australia called Sizzler. Sizzler. It was all you can eat buffet. It was unlimited food. Oh, people would fly in from overseas just to have a meal at Sizzler. It was that good. And of course, back in the day, Pizza Hut used to have all you can eat Tuesday. That's right. I remember as a teenager going in and I would get one pizza and I'd have a Tupperware container in my backpack. And I, one time I filled up that Tupperware container, I took home and I counted 21 pieces of pizza. No, I'm, don't do that, okay? That's a no-no. But everything about those restaurants was unlimited. What can I say when it comes to the Holy Spirit? He's unlimited for what He can do in your life. It's not like the Holy Spirit has batteries that will run out. It's not like the Holy Spirit needs Energy Australia or Osgrid to keep going. 
It's not like the Holy Spirit needs solar panels to be more efficient. And there are no outages in the power of the Holy Spirit. And when it comes to the Holy Spirit, He's not just a plan for your life. No, He's a person in your life. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says that He has a mind. In Romans, he's the, he has a mind of the Spirit. It says that he has a will in Corinthians. It says that he has emotions in uh, Ephesians. So he's a person. Everything about the Holy Spirit is unlimited. Unlimited supply, unlimited favor, unlimited power, unlimited pers- uh, 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 promise, unlimited presence in our lives. He's not limited by your situation. I wonder what limits you're placing on God tonight. I wonder what limitations you think that what God can do or can't do in your life. Can I tell you, God's spirit is unlimited tonight for what he can do. Let's have a look in the Bible, Acts chapter one, and go with me to verse four. We're gonna start reading there, and it says this. It says, on one occasion while he was eating with them, it says he gave them this command. He said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for my father who's promised, which you have heard me speak about. And then he says, for John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now go down to verse eight, and it says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses to Samaria, Judea, Judah, and to the ends of the world. Then over to chapter two, it says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in the one place and suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled, someone say filled. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came on each of them. And all of them were filled. Someone say filled. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. You know, this passage of Scripture is what Jesus refers to as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you think about that word baptized, you're like, what? What does that mean? The word baptized literally means just to be immersed. To be immersed in the Spirit. To be covered. To be full of the Spirit. And you know, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came like a wind. Like a wind. You know, all throughout Scripture, you read that the Holy Spirit is spoken about sometimes in metaphors. Like here, it says that he was like a wind that he come. In other occasions, it says like the breath, the breath of God. You know, in essence, that's what God wants to do tonight. He wants to breathe something fresh into your life tonight. He wants to breathe his presence, his spirit, and his power into our lives. You know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 16, that all scripture is God breathed. The Bible says in Job 34 verse, uh, 33 verse 4, the Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The breath. You know, in Moses' time, in ancient Jewish culture, scholars show us that the name Yahweh, the name Yahweh that was God's name, was not how we spell it today in our English language. But in ancient Jewish times, the way they spoke, uh, spelt the name Yahweh, and I'm gonna bring it up on the screen so you can see it, was Y-H-W-H. And that's how they, how they spoke about the name of God. And I want you to notice something about those, the name. There's no vowels in God's name. There's no vowels in God's name. So if one was to pronounce it, it would simply come out as breath. When the Jews spoke it, it would be. (sighs) 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 That's how they'd say the name of God. Because the Jews believed that every breath you take, you're speaking and declaring 
the mighty name of God over your life, that every living creature on earth, every animal, every mammal, every human, every day is declaring the mighty name of God, that every race, every gender, every ethnicity, every nationality is speaking the mighty name of God simply by breathing because we're made in the image and likeness of God. And God wants to breathe his breath over us. And you see, what does the baptism of the Holy Spirit look like in our lives? Let me give you a couple of things. Here's the first one. Number one, it's an inexplicable experience. The baptism of the Spirit, you can't explain it. You can't fathom it. You can't comprehend it. No, it's inexplicable. In fact, the Bible says in Romans 8, 26, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans, wordless groans. Why? Because you can't understand the supernatural. You can't understand how God works through his Holy Spirit. That's why we need to trust. You know, when I was... 14 years of age is when I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And I didn't know much about it, but I remember just being in church and I remember it taking place. And when I got filled with the Spirit, I wanna tell you, I got on a high. Like I got on this high that I can't explain. It was like nothing could get me down. And it didn't just last days. It was like weeks and weeks I was on this high. Now, I was in school at the time. And I had other friends who also liked to get high. But their high was probably a different high than what I'm talking about tonight. They would get high with Mary Jane and Puff the Magic Dragon and the green Mercedes Benz and uh, Wake and Bake and uh, the Rasta weed and all of that sort of marijuana stuff. But let me tell you something. When they got high, it would only last a couple of hours and then they'd come down and go back to life with no meaning and no hope and no purpose. But I wanna tell you, when you get high from the Holy Spirit, something happens to your life. You're not just gonna come down because the Holy Spirit is with you everywhere you go. And I remember being in school the week that I got filled with the Spirit and I was in science. And this girl behind me, she said, Sanger. And I said, yeah, and she goes, there's something different about you. This is what she said to me. There's something different about you. And she said, she said, did you get a girlfriend? And I said, no. She said, did you go surfing this morning? And I said, no. She said, did you pass your school exams? And I said, no, but <laughs> no judgment. And then she said this, she literally said, did you get filled and become like a, she said, did you become a spirit-filled Christian? That's what she said to me. And I said, yes. And so at lunchtime, I'm aside with her and I'm telling her about this encounter that I had with Jesus and how it's, you can't even comprehend it, this high that God gets you on. You know, my mom later started coming to the church because we were talking about being filled with the Spirit. So she was very inquisitive. She wanted to know more. So my mum come along. Then she gets filled with the Spirit. And she starts speaking in this heavenly language. Well, that week in her Anglican church, it was her turn to share. You see, the minister was getting people from the parish to share five minutes of a scripture and talk about it. And my mum was on that weekend. So she gets up and she opens up to the book of Acts. And she starts reading about what has just taken place in her life. And the Holy Spirit did something in that service, started to fall in that little Anglican church, and every single person started speaking in tongues and getting filled with the Spirit. <laughs> then the priest gets up and is so angry and walks over to my mom and says, Delma, stop what you are doing. And my mom looked back and she said, it's okay. It's the Holy Spirit and put her hands on her and the priest got filled with the Spirit. She started speaking in tongue. There's something about it. It's inexplicable. You can't comprehend it, but it's something from God that he wants us to have. 
which is the second point, is it's a separate experience. So it's an inexplicable experience, but the second one I want to share is it's separate experience. Acts chapter 8, verse 15 to 17 says, when they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. So Peter and John placed his hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. You see, it's a separate experience from your salvation experience, even if it happens simultaneously. You see, my mom, she'd been a Christian for years, but it was later where she received the Holy Spirit. But my salvation experience wasn't like that. You see, when I got saved, I was in that church and in my sister's church, I'd been a few times and I'm listening to the preacher and he's talking about an altar call to give your life to Jesus. And instantly I stood firm and I said, I'm not moving. I'm not going down there. Don't tell me what to do. And my pride started to rise up and I'm like, I'm not. you know how you can be in church sometimes and people are lifting your hands and thinking, I'm not lifting my hands. Hands go in the pocket. I'm not doing that. Don't tell me. Hand goes up. Get back down there. No, it's not. You know, I was like that. I'm like, I'm not going forward. And so in my row, when the church service finished, I decided to pray the prayer anyway. And I said, God, if you're real, I said, I want you to come into my heart. And straight away, I felt like these waves of love start to come down. It was like from the top of my head to the tips of my toe. I felt like all of the hurt and the hatred I'd ever had in me was like leaving my body. And it was like standing under a waterfall, but not getting wet. And at the same time, I knew it was God because I start weeping and crying because I'm like, God, this is you coming into my life. But at the same time, I get filled with the Holy Spirit not knowing what's going on. I'm crying and then from inside me, this language bursts out of my mouth and I'm starting to say, Yimdai, Rundai, Shandai, Nikki Naki, Nora, Dora, the Explorer. It's just coming out. And I didn't know what was going on. But here I it was just speaking out and I didn't know what was happening to me. It was only when my sister sat me down later and explained to me the Holy Spirit when He comes on our lives. And so it's a separate experience, which leads me to my next point. It's a necessary experience. It's a necessary experience. Number three, because the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's essential for our walk with God. And I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says it's a command in Ephesians 5, 19. The Bible says it empowers us to be a witness in Acts chapter 1. The Bible says it enables us to use the gifts of the Spirit in Acts chapter 10. So our part, all we need to do is receive what Jesus said is a gift that the Father had promised. You see, Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 5, 18, he says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, but instead be filled with the Spirit, he says. You ever heard that saying, well, they're under the influence. When someone's had too much to drink, they're under the influence. The police in Australia, if you've had too much alcohol, they'll pull you over and they'll say, you're under the influence. I want to tell you something. I think some Christians need to get under the influence. Not under the influence of alcohol, but maybe get under the influence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. You see, I'm not talking about getting drunk, where the first thing you want to do is get up at karaoke and sing. No, I'm talking about getting filled with the Holy Spirit, where you get up with a God-given confidence over your life to stand up for what's happening in your heart. I'm not talking about just having happy hour. No, I'm talking about a joy that goes with you everywhere you go. I'm not talking about having a drunken brawl fight. No, I'm talking about knowing there's a God who fights for you, who is for you, that says greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. It's a necessary experience to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Here's the next one, number four. It's an evident experience. It's an evident experience. You know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit has an outward expression. And the Bible calls it speaking in tongues. But it also has other outward expressions, which are the gifts of the Spirit. 
the Bible says. You know, people who are filled with the Spirit can and should speak that language of the Holy Spirit. You know, in Acts chapter, uh, in the book of Acts, there's five accounts where the Holy Spirit is poured out on people's lives. There's the disciples at Pentecost. There's the people of Samaria. There's Paul in Acts chapter 9. There's Cornelius and the Gentiles. There's the disciples of John at Ephesus. Five times where they were filled with the Spirit. Did you know three out of those five times, the Bible says they spoke in other tongues. And the Bible says on the fourth occasion, they saw something different about them. You see, there's an evidence that comes with being filled with the Holy Spirit. I remember praying for a friend of mine, Phil. Not Phil here, not Dooley, but another friend. I do have other Phil's in my life. And we were young, and I remember Phil was coming to church, but he wasn't filled with the Spirit. And he was like, well, we'd say, do you want to be filled with the Spirit, Phil? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll get filled with the Spirit. So we'd come and we'd pray for Phil. And I remember praying for him at church on altar calls. And we go, God, fill him, fill him. And we're waiting, God, fill him. I heard him speak in other tongues and Phil would be there. And then he'd open his eyes and he'd say, it's not working, Sanger. <laughs> and so we'd keep praying. We'd say, God, fill him, fill him with your spirit. And he'd open the eyes and say, yeah, still nothing. And, <laughs> and keep going. We'd pray for him at Connect Group. We'd gather around him and we'd pray for Phil. And Phil would be like, still not working, guys. And, then, and it was the story of when we prayed for Phil. But you know, two years later, when I moved down to Sydney, Phil gave me a call. And Phil rings me and he says, hey, Sanger, he goes, I just wanted to thank you for all those years where you'd pray for me to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, because I was in my church and I was in worship and in the middle of the worship, the Holy Spirit fell on our service and I started speaking in tongues and I got filled with the Spirit for the very first time. I was like, it's so awesome. Here's the thing. You know, the Bible says that speaking in tongues is actually a sign of being a believer. The Bible says in Mark 16, verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. There's an evidence to speaking, to, uh, to being filled with the Spirit. The Bible says there's benefits of speaking this Holy Spirit language. It's a gift from God in Corinthians. It builds up your faith in Jude 20. It strengthens you in your weakness in Romans 8. You're praying the perfect will of God in Romans chapter 8. And you edify yourself in Corinthians. It's an evident experience being filled with the Spirit. And finally, and I'm going to get the worship team to come. Number five why you should be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, because it's an empowering experience. The baptism in the Spirit should change us completely and give us a passion and an ability to be a witness. It says in Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit falls on you and be my witnesses. I love seeing when people bring their friends to church for the first time or when they bring family members for the first time. You know why? Because they're just so excited to share with them what's been happening in their lives. They want them to experience the same joy, the same encounter with God that they've had. And that's what being a witness is. It's simply about sharing your faith. It's simply about allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you in your everyday work, around your friends, at your school, in your workplace, at your social gatherings. When was the last time you said, Holy Spirit, lead me when it comes to being a witness? You know, my, uh, I used to pray with a guy named Dave for many years. Growing up, we'd pray on a Wednesday night. On one Wednesday night, I went round to his house he said, come over early, we'll have dinner. He said, my sister's home. I said, yeah, sure, come over. Dave's sister was there, Maggie. I hadn't seen Maggie for about five or six years and she wasn't a, a Christian. And so I'm over there and we're having dinner. And as we're eating dinner, you know, I'm just enjoying a roast dinner that their parents had cooked. And, the, and, and as we're eating, 
I feel the Holy Spirit speak to me about Maggie sitting across the table. And I feel the Holy Spirit just say this word, unconditional love. And that's who I, I just kept hearing this phrase, unconditional love. And every time I looked at Maggie, that phrase got in my spirit, unconditional love. And internally, I said, God, I am not saying unconditional love to Maggie, okay? I haven't seen her for five or six years. So I just kept going. There was some good roast potatoes and, oh, and there was some gravy and oh, I tell you what, and some roast lamb and chicken. I just kept going. And then I look up and I keep getting an unconditional love. So finally, I say, okay, God, I'm just gonna do what you're giving. And I, I, I say, hey, Maggie, I said, so good to see you. Hadn't seen her for about five or six years. And I said, you know, I'm a Christian like your brother. And I said, I just really feel that God just wants you to know that his love for you is unconditional. And then I just got back into the roast potatoes. I'm just saying, I'm into those roast potatoes. Well, she puts a knife and fork down. It goes quiet. And then Maggie starts sobbing at the table, literally bawling her eyes out. Well, Dave's parents look at me like, what have you done? And I'm like, okay, okay, all right, okay. And so Dave and I take his sister into the living room and we start telling her about the love that God has for her life. And it turns out, I didn't know this, but the reason she was there was because her marriage had broken down. The husband had run off with another girl. And in her mind, the idea of love was very broken. And all she needed to know is that there is an unconditional love that comes from God. And so in that moment, we're telling her this and we're asking her, do you want Jesus to come into your heart? And she's like, yes, we start to pray for her. But at the same time, the power of the Holy Spirit falls on her life. She hits the floor and starts speaking in tongues all at the same time. Me and Dave, we didn't even touch her. I said, I didn't do it. He said, it wasn't me. But God was doing something in her life. That's the power, power, power of the Holy Spirit power at work in our lives. He empowers you to be a witness. Hey, you don't know what can happen. If you just step out, you just take a chance of faith. You don't know what seeds you're sowing. You don't know what needs you're meeting when you speak that name Jesus into your friends and family's lives. The Holy Spirit is always at work. He's your advocate. He's your guide. He's, he's the one that leads you. He's a comforter. He's a counsellor. He's, he's the one, the guarantor. He's a seal. He's the new wine. He's the wind of heaven. He's the breath of God. When you understand the power of the Spirit, the oil of the anointing, He wants to fill your life tonight. Whatever location you're at tonight, I wanna to tell you, the Holy Spirit wants to fill you tonight. Right here in the Hills campus, Holy Spirit wants to fill you tonight. You need the power, 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 the Holy Spirit power in your life. Why don't all of us stand up to our feet? Let's take a moment there in Newcastle, South Africa that are watching, they're in Bali online, we're all gonna take a moment. We're gonna worship God. And in all the locations, the campus pastors are gonna get up and they're gonna help lead this moment as we pray for people in just a moment. So come on, D, why don't you lead us?
across, right across this auditorium and there in every location, I wanna ask you a question, simple as this. Are you filled with the Spirit? Have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Do you know His power at work in your life? Have you seen the gifts of the Spirit at work in your life? Have you had the fruit of the Spirit outworking from your life? Because tonight you can. And you know what? The beautiful thing is, Jesus said, it's actually a gift for you. It's actually a gift for you. And so wherever you are, if you have not been filled with the Spirit right now in every location, just lift up your hand. There online as well, just lift it up, say, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to be filled with the Spirit. That's it. I can see hands going up everywhere. Come on, Newcastle. Come on, Bali. Right across South Africa, online. If that's you, you lift it up, say, yeah, I wanna be filled with the Spirit. I want this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, right now, what I want you to do, slip out of your seat, and would you come and stand down the front? Because we're gonna pray for you. We're gonna believe for the Holy Spirit to move in you. So in every location, there in Newcastle, Bali, Come down the front, South Africa, online. You lift your hand, you get ready to receive as well. But right now, come, push your way down the front. Make your way down the front. We're gonna see the Holy Spirit baptise people tonight. Come on, let's keep just declaring that. I surrender, come on, wanna know you more. a rushing wind in the next part, just a moment. All right, everyone, you wanna receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I just want you to lift your hands. We said it's an act of surrender, like what we've been singing. Some of our pastors and some of our team, they're just gonna start to come and move through the people down the front. They're just gonna lay hands on you. And and I just believe that the power of the Holy Spirit is gonna be at work there in Newcastle, in Bali, South Africa, online. Just lift your hands, but people are gonna come. But everyone with your hands raised, I want you to say this prayer after me right now. Dear Jesus, right now, I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I receive His power and the infilling of the Holy Spirit in my life. Come now and fill me. In Jesus' Name, Amen, Amen. Now lift your hands. Holy Ghost, come. Come on, like a rushing. Spirit of God, begin to fill, fill, fill. Touch people, fill people. Now begin to speak it out. Speak it out. If you speak in the language of the Holy Spirit,
know it sounds strange. I remember when I got filled with the Spirit for the first time, it sounded so strange. I actually even doubted myself that is this from God? Is this? But you know what? It's not something you make up. <laughs> no one goes around making this stuff up. And so what I want to encourage you to do is just let go of all doubts. Let go of all fears. And I want you to just start thanking God, opening your mouth and thanking God and say, Holy Spirit, fill me, fill me. And just praise Him, just praise Him. And I believe it's gonna bubble up. I believe you're gonna get the evidence of the Holy Spirit. It's gonna speak. So come on, let's just, let's just do that one more time. Come on, Jesus, right now, Holy Ghost, open your mouth, you start to declare it. Open your mouth, you start to declare it. You start to praise Him. You start to worship Him. Right now, let it come. There it is. There it is, there it is, there it is. Holy Ghost, that's it. Speak it out, speak it out, speak it out. That's it. Spirit of God. That's it. Speak it out, speak it out. Be filled, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Mighty God, mighty God. I'm going to believe for new, for people to receive new tongues, a new language of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've already been filled. You're saying, yeah, I want more. You lift your hands wherever you are. You lift your hands across all the locations. Let's pray for a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray for rivers of living water of the Holy Spirit. Father, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill people. Touch people. Let a new river, let a fresh water begin to overflow in people's hearts. Holy Spirit, pour out. Holy Spirit, pour out. Touch people afresh. Come on. encourage you to keep speaking the language you received it tonight keep speaking it and others you're saying well I I don't really like my friend feel like it hasn't happened yet can I say go home just keep asking the Holy Spirit just say Holy Spirit I receive it Holy Spirit I receive it and believe for it over your lives in Jesus name and I want to pray for one more group of people that are here tonight that maybe you've never met, made your peace with God Maybe you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart as your Lord and Saviour. Maybe you've never said yes to God. Maybe you came with a friend or a family member tonight. Maybe you're in another location and you've never really put your faith in God. Well, tonight I wanna pray a prayer with you. If you wanna say yes to Jesus and say, yeah, I'd like to know this God that we're hearing about. I'd like to know this Jesus. Well, friend, let me tell you something. He doesn't want religion with you. He wants a relationship with you. And you might be here tonight and you might say, well, I don't believe in God, but let me tell you something, He believes in you. And if you will just open up your heart to Him and say yes to Jesus, He'll come into your life 
and give you a hope for your tomorrow, a brand new start for your life, simply by saying yes to Jesus. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, right across the Hills campus, there in Newcastle, there in Bali, there in South Africa, online, if that's you and you need to say yes to Jesus tonight, then I want you just to raise your hand, say, hey, pray for me. Say, pray for me. That's it. Lift up your hands. That's it. I can see hands being raised right across this auditorium. They're in other locations. They're online. You just lift them as well. Say, yeah, I want Jesus. Even if you once walked with God, then you know in your heart you've been distant. Come back to God tonight. Come back to Him. Lift up your hand. Say, yeah, I want to know Him tonight. Beautiful. We're going to say a prayer together. You can put your hands down. We're gonna say this prayer, asking Jesus to come into our heart. And so why don't we all close our eyes and let's all say this prayer out loud together. Dear Jesus, tonight I need You. Come into my life. Forgive me of sin and all of my past mistakes. Tonight, Jesus, I accept You as my Lord, as my Saviour and as my best friend. Help me to walk with You and know Your Holy Spirit for the rest of my days. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Come on, can we thank God for people responding tonight? And if you did, raise your hand. And I know right across everywhere, there were hands raised everywhere. We wanna give you a Bible tonight. And uh, even if you've got a Bible, why don't you receive this? is a gift from us to you. Let it mark the day today that you decided to get your life right with Jesus. We think it's the best decision you can make with your life. And on all of the exits, there will be uh, people holding up these Bibles. Just go up to them, take one, say, hey, I prayed that prayer. We'll gladly give it into your hands. And we wanna help you take your next step on the journey of faith. And if you're online, just put in the chat, I prayed that prayer and someone will be in touch with you to help you on that journey of faith with Jesus. Do we believe it tonight, church? Can we thank everyone one more time for making that decision? Amen.